salutations it's me serenity um coming back on here today to talk about um how the twin flame consciousness unlocks well every relationship that you're in even the soulmate consciousness unlocks um something within you that once was dormant and we're attracted to these individuals because we are ready for that which we see in them whether it's big or small to be unlocked within us so that it can breathe it's like we suffocate ourselves but not intentionally it's because you know we grow up with all these um indoctrinations and we grow up into certain families and we learn all these things but we're trying to learn which parts which aspects really resonate with our true selves and it takes relating to others um to do that and i can say that because i spend a lot of time in solitude and i learn no i learn a lot about myself too but i learn um I learn in both scenarios, but I, I am able to unlock parts of me through relating to others. And that's just my perspective. It could be different for other people. And it's actually a scenario that I would prefer not to do because I, I prefer to be alone, honestly. I talk to a lot of people. Not a lot of people. <laughs> that was a lot. I talk to, um, where am I? Mm. I talk to enough people to know that my natural state of being is being alone. Um, although I am getting more comfortable being my complete true self with others. Um, because usually I'm just, when I connect to someone else's stream of consciousness, I don't know why I went this way. When I connect to someone else's stream of consciousness, it's all about them and then I'm just warped into their vortex. But now that I know myself um, more, um, more deeply, I can um, be more of me. I can be free. You see? What is that? I guess that's the reflection of the phone. <laughs> it's weird, but it's interesting. But it's weird. <laughs> it's distracting. That's all I can see now. But I can undistract myself and forget it's there, you know? You know? You can do that. Um, but I think I'm starting to realize um, what the whole, what the takeaway message I'm supposed to get from this relationship with the person that I see as my twin flame was to unlock um, my expressive side and my spiritual side. Because in other relationships, when I would, it, it wasn't into my, my, pre, my most, uh, recent relationship two years two years ago maybe a year and a half ago feels like two years feels like a decade feels like it never happened feels like a long time ago um i try like a, a little bit of my spirituality would peek out um i would give him messages from his dead uncle and i would um we would talk about briefly about things like um his his um sister that died about her being reincarnated into his niece just stuff like that um but then when I would bring it up he would get kind of not weird about it but just like oh I don't believe in all that stuff and so it's really discouraging you know um and so when someone starts to discourage or judge a part of me that feels viscerally real that is intangible but i know is my truth the resonance starts to dissipate and and so it was a blessing to because a part of me was rising that's why it feels like what when i say twin um, projecting your twin flame consciousness onto someone else it's like a part of you the real you is trying to rise up the real the twin flame in you because it's a union with the entirety of the self it's a union back to the source of unconditional love for yourself it's not really about that person we're projecting it 
onto that person so that we can it can be reflected back to us so that we can learn what we are trying to learn and I know I'm really repetitive about this but it's because I'm trying to process it and the more I talk about it the more I get to fully understand the scope of it because the twin flame thing like I said in many of my videos it cracked me completely open but it also helped me crack the code completely open you know what I'm saying okay it's a blessing it's a blessing so much a blessing um and And yes, so it's helped me realize that I can um, I can feel comfortable now to express my spiritual, mystical side, um, and just express myself in general in in poetry and and um, dancing, uh, pictures, whatever it is. Everything is an artistic expression of the soul. Whatever it is that you're doing and putting out there, that's what it is. Um, no matter how it comes out at any given moment of time, that's what it is, and it's beautiful. All of it is beautiful because because it, it makes up moments in life um, um, and the reason um, another reason I'm, I'm speaking about this is because I was feeling a little triggered today because I wanted to connect with the person that I saw as my twin um, and I did reach out to him but um, it also it, it made me think like what is this feeling of needing to connect with only him like i need to be connecting to myself and i can also connect with others sorry i smell gas really strongly i can also connect with others in the way that i connect with my twin so you know this desperation energy got to go like no because it, it makes me move differently and i don't have time for that i'm trying to move a certain way and desperation needy energy is gone that's all i'm gonna say um, and so, um, I went out today to make some money because I'm going out of town and I was like, um, not that my bank account is really low, but, um, it could, there could be more money in there. It could be more, you know, it could always be more, right? Um, <laughs> so, um, but most of my money is I'm saving and putting away so I can pay this car note. You know, the lovely car that I'm in that gets me around everywhere, which I'm so blessed for. So most of that is for that. So I wanted some extra spending money because I'm going out of town to go see my father. Um, and I know there's going to be a lot of healing involved there and a lot of um, unraveling of some wounds um, so that we both can heal and connect in the heart space. I know that sounds deep, but it's true. It's true. And we're going to see. But um, I wanted some spending money when I was down when I go down there, and um, I didn't really know how I was gonna get it because I don't have a. a am I going the right way? Uh, yes, because um, I don't have a stable job right now. And I don't really want one. I want to create my own job. I want to create my own career, and um, I'm doing that by working on my books and my poetry and um, some other stuff is gonna manifest. I'm sure. But um, I was like, dang, I really want some spending money when I go down there so I won't be just, like, looking like an idiot. Like, not looking like an idiot, but, um, you know, currency and abundance gives you freedom to do what you want to a certain degree. Whether it's getting a snack, which can be very fulfilling, or um, paying for gas so you can get around. You know, a lot of things. Um, so I didn't know where I was going to get the money, but the other day I was recording a video for my most recent journal and for my most recent journal and um just as i was about to leave i was like dang i forgot to record this specific clip of the video that i really wanted to put in there and i had already left the scene <laughs> the scene of the crime i'm just kidding it wasn't a crime well i was trespassing but it wasn't i guess it was the scene of the crime okay so um so i left and i forgot to record that clip and so I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back, but I was like, that's too far, and I'm ready to go home. And so I ended up going to another area on the beach, which is my favorite area on the beach. It's like a really beautiful rock in the middle of the ocean. And, um, but I, I didn't want to go, and I, I didn't want to go because I always go there and I wanted new scenery, but I ended up going anyway. And as soon as I went over there, um, I was listening to a YouTube video and I heard a phone ring, but I assumed it was a phone. Um, from the person on the YouTube video, I, I assumed it was someone calling them. Um, but then something in me was like, no, this it feels too close to home. It feels like a real phone. So I, I looked down right under the no trespassing sign, you know. <laughs> um, 
and um, it said no caller ID. And then as soon as I picked up, I was like, oh, I found your phone. I knew, I just instinctively knew that it was the person that um, that left their phone there. And um, it was just a coincidence that I was there and he lived in the area, um, but he didn't come and pick the phone up. I ended up going to meet his mother and his father to give the phone to them. And when I got there, they ended up giving me 20 bucks. And I was like, yes, yes. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. That was the last thing I was expecting because I don't, I don't really, I don't really be asking for nothing from nobody. I don't need nothing from nobody. I just do stuff out of the goodness of my heart. I just go with my intuition and that's how it goes. And then I got the money, the spending money that I desired. And um, I also do, um, uh, background work and um, I had been applying for background work for like a, a week or something and I haven't been getting accepted and I didn't care because I was actually doing things for my own self so I didn't really want to go and it, I didn't so it worked out you know they knew they knew I didn't want to go <laughs> okay but then I got approved for today and so um, and today was the day that I was like oh there's a police there see I'm always on my phone with the police all around and today was the day that I was like, I want to connect with my twin. And basically, I wanted to connect with my, um, sorry, I'm sorry, he's mad at me. He's like, you're on the phone. You don't care about anybody's life but your own. You're selfish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He may be tired. He's getting on the plane. I don't know. I don't know his life. I'm not sure. Um, sorry, I'm at the um, airport because I'm leaving tomorrow and I want to see, you know, get used to the scenery to see how it's going to be for us tomorrow. Um, and it looks pretty pretty good as far as not hectic and chaotic because i hate that i hate that stuff i hate when it's a lot of people i hate when it's a lot of stuff to maneuver it's just it's too much for my brain my brain capacity to to hold um but anyways um so i had texted him and reached out to him because i was like you know if it's on my heart to reach out i'm gonna reach out and so I did. I, I haven't really looked at my text messages to see if he responded. Um, but that's also fear consciousness because I don't know if he responded. But then at the end of the day, it's like nobody's mandated to do anything. You don't have to respond. I mean, it, it wasn't. It shouldn't be about the response. It should be about you just letting out what you wanted to let out. And so <laughs> I went the far way. Like, um, yeah. And so... Um, when I went there, um, I was just reading my books, you know, in my own world because I don't want to talk to nobody because I just don't be feeling like it. And that's another thing, me not wanting to talk to nobody and, and projecting that out there um, is like a form of judgment and a form of making it seem like they're not on my level or something. And that's not good either. So I'm trying to put that wall down and I'm, I'm actually doing a great job. Okay. If I do say so myself, um, slowly but surely the walls are coming down. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down. Okay, so um, I was reading my book, and I was about to go in, and um, randomly this um, this girl literally ran up to me and um, went came next to me and said, "Oh, can you put this trail mix in in your bag?" I'm like, "Wait, what?" I'm like, "Okay, um, okay. I mean, okay." Um, usually, you know, and I have discernment. Like, if it was somebody that, you know, I always I always say yes to people. I can't even, not say yes like that. I'm not, like, gullible or something like that. But I'm um, just very generous. Um, and she wanted me to put her trail mix in my bag because she didn't know if they would allow her to bring it in there because they have certain rules, but they didn't have those kind of rules this time. But um, I put them in my bag, and then we ended up talking, and she was um, telling me about some psychic-related um experiences that she's had and some basically spiritual mystical content and it just reaffirmed i don't know why he's doing that <laughs> i don't like people when they beep their horn like what is what is that it's so interruptive and it's like is something wrong like it makes me think of a dire emergency and it's like oh my god like <sighs> is everything okay dang it okay that's why I never beat my horn. I mean, is it going to teach someone a lesson? I, what is it for? Um, it's like, just be patient. So, so um, it just confirmed to me um, 
you know, my twin is not the only person that I can connect with on that level as far as spiritualism and mysticism and extra sensory perception and stuff like that. Um, I've just been hiding that part of me from myself and from others so they won't think that I'm weird or they won't think that what are you talking about. And plus, I'm still trying to figure out the intricacies. I'm always using that word because everything is intricate, okay? This whole existence is intricate. I'm sorry, it is. So... I'm still trying to figure out the intricacies of how my extrasensory perceptivity works because I know I got it because I'm always in tune with the subtleties of everything that's going on in my reality. Sometimes I shut it down because it'd be too overwhelming and I'm like, no, I can't intake all of this energy right now. But now I'm getting used to holding holding space for it and so it's like, um, it's just natural. And so it's just a blessing that she was able to come through and, and exist as that concept for me so that um, I won't be so clingy and attached to this one person and put all my all into this one person um, because everybody is a concept. And so um, I think he also is the concept, um, and this is just me projecting my stuff onto him, but he is, the, he is that concept for me. So it is valid because it's my experience. Um, because also, usually when I'm um, dating somebody or even friends, um, whenever I feel like we don't resonate and I feel like they just won't get it or they won't get me or I just have to explain layers upon layers just to get to a solid point um, where we can both be on the same level, that's when I just want to disconnect completely because I feel like I don't have time for this. Like I don't have time to explain everything, but then that's the level of judgment. So then that's not right, is it? I don't know. But that just explains why I like to spend a lot of time alone because I just don't have the energy to expend to build upon things to get to a, a solid level of comfortability where we can both continue to expand and um and grow and understand but everything doesn't have to be about that it could be just about fun maybe that'll happen for me one day i don't know i'm not sure um, i want to have fun i think yeah because i'll be really serious all the time um and sometimes i wonder like people that are funny and they take everything as a joke like they are they like really enlightened where they just don't care about anything and they just like found the key to just liberation they're just like completely free they don't care about trying to figure stuff out and wisdom or something or is it a defense mechanism where they need it to cope you know i don't know i don't know <laughs> um so i also feel like the person that that um i projected my twin flame consciousness onto um is the concept of being able to learn how to relate to um an individual um for a su substantial period of time and not just completely blocking and cutting them off i mean i have blocked him and cut him off quite a few times but he keeps coming back so i mean i don't know um and, i mean but a lot of other people kept coming back too but i didn't want nothing to do with that it just wasn't gonna work anymore it didn't work okay but so I just feel blessed that I'm coming to these realizations of the the deeper reasoning and meaning behind um, me calling this experience into my um, reality. And I'm, I was also thinking, I don't know if this video is going to cut off. Sorry, guys, but I don't be having any um, that much juice because I record a lot of stuff and I never want to delete it. And that brings me to my point. I have a hard time letting go of things. I'm like, just in case I might need it. But I, I don't have a hard time letting go of things that I know I won't need anymore. But when I have some kind of attachment to it, I'm like, I don't want to let it go. You never know. You never know. Okay? You never know. But, um, honestly, about deleting stuff. Yeah. But as far as my previous video about twin flames um, and non-attachment, um, it's like, because I was wondering, how can I be attached to this person like, I don't want to be attached to anything because I want to have the lightest body possible so I can float up and leave this earthly plane. I don't want to be tethered to this place by anyone. And I know that it, it sounds insensitive, but I know that that's possible because your emotions are tethered to your to the spirit realm. And so they can keep you tethered here. And you can be a ghost and all that kind of stuff. I talked about that in my last video. Um, and so I'm just getting confused about if I'm supposed to be, enjoy a partnership and enjoy deep and meaningful relationships. Um, how do you enjoy deep and meaningful relationships while still allowing room for them, um, while still knowing the soul truth that it's going to eventually dissipate and end because you're going to die or they're going to die? Like, deeply loving, there is devastation in deeply loving someone. 
and I'm sure every empath, highly sensitive person, any person that's not even attuned to what those concepts or words are, any person knows that. Like with deep love comes deep grief. And I think that's what I'm afraid of feeling is that deep grief and that deep loss of something. But I also know I need that deep connection or else I'm gonna feel like, what's the point? And so I'm in a space of learning how to connect deeply and form partnerships with individuals without judging and without leaving um, and allowing us to, allowing it to manifest and unfurl as it, um, as it's destined to unfurl moment by moment and, and not controlling everything. And I also noticed that in, in the dynamic with the person I, I see as my twin, um, flame consciousness in male form, even though I was having these psychical experiences um, and te telepathic experiences and stuff, and and he didn't, he didn't really. Um, there were some experiences where he'll text me and then it's like, oh, I was just thinking about you, or we must be on the same page, or synchronicities and stuff like that, or seeing coyotes at the same time, or stuff like that. Um, nothing grandiose. Um, but I have had times where um, I had dreams of where he was at because he travels a lot. Um, I've had dreams of. Um, specific locations and from I've had, I've had access to information from his subconscious mind that I, sh I shouldn't have had access to because I'm not checking up on him in any sense or, or form but I knew where he was um but I was also in a way trying to control it because I was trying to understand it but now that I'm still trying to understand it because I want to understand myself and, and but I don't want to use it in the form of manipulation I just want to use it in the form of how it's coming to me so that it can be used for the best and highest um, benefit of, of all parties involved. Um, but it, it involves getting out of your own way, even though your whole self is, even though getting in tune with yourself and in touch with yourself is key to living a liberated existence, it can still sometimes hinder you because I think Alan Watts said something about you can be too conscious, like if you're too conscious of the fact that you're conscious you can get in your own way and I can relate to that I can attest to that but I'm moving to the side so that I can experience all the experiences I came here to experience and I think that's all I wanted to get off of my chest today um and there were okay there, there was one more thing about the twin flame thing because it really, it really helps you to purge and break down a lot of the patterns in your life um, very quickly, very, very quickly, um, and without you even wanting it to do that. <laughs> it like forces you to. You force yourself to, okay? Um, because sometimes I would move in a way that wasn't even how I wanted to move because of something the person I saw as my twin was doing or something, a person that he was in relation to was doing and it would make me move a certain way and basically I'm talking about third parties sometimes I can just talk, talk very conceptually and not give a lot of details because it doesn't really matter about the details to a certain degree it does but it doesn't um so yeah I'm, I'm talking about a third party and sometimes when a third party I would feel a third party um encroaching on um his energetic space uh, I would get insecure and get um would I say jealous? I don't know. Yeah, I guess. And I would feel like selfish. I would feel like I just want this connection for us. But it's like, first of all, we're young. Second of all, we don't own anybody. Third of all, we don't have an established relationship. We're, we're just experiencing each other in relations in relation to each other. So there's really no rules or ground rules or you know what I mean? Um, but I, in the future, I do want to... To be with one person and one person only forever um and it may not be that person sometimes you're not even i'm not even gonna go there um and so i'm just in this space now where i'm ready and willing to it's okay where i'm ready and willing to express all of me um without filters without barriers to um everyone i come into contact with not everyone but the people that i feel a deep resonance with um, I'm not afraid anymore because there's nothing to be afraid of. And the, the reason I would cling so much to my twin because it was the only person I could express that side of me with. And so I felt a desperation and a need to, um, because it, and a need to do that to connect with him because it helped me connect more deeply to myself. But now I'm not in that space anymore. 
Um, so now I feel like I've freed up space within myself and I feel very blessed to be in this situation. And we bring ourselves out of it. I'm going the wrong way. I think I can get out of here. I probably can. Um, so who knows what the future has to hold. Um, I'll exit terminals. Um, I'm not too deeply clinging to any expectations anymore because there's no point because the expectations you lead yourself to frustration and suffering because you are expecting something that is not may not even be meant to come into fruition so that's my spiel for today I don't know what I'm gonna call it twin flame Twin flame projective reflection. Twin flame reflective projections. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, blessed be beautifully beloved beings. I will connect with you at a later time, on a later date. For goodness sake. Okay. Bye-bye.